the authority of the name Jesus. But I want you to know that the name Jesus does not just hold authority, but the name Jesus is the most powerful name in the universe. So pleasure is mine to share with you about the sweetest name on earth. The name that is above every name. The most famous name. The excellent name. The name Jesus. I shall start by establishing the importance of names. To help you to understand and to appreciate why God, in rewarding Jesus Christ of Nazareth, did not give him anything but a name. Then I will try and drive home the fact that the name Jesus holds authority in the universe, but the name Jesus is also the most powerful name on earth. Psalm 9 verse 10. Psalm 9 verse 10. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Those who know your name trust in you. I'm not talking about those who sing the name or who tell stories of the name or who preach the name. But those who know the name, they will put their trust in God. Psalm Proverbs 18 verse 10. Proverbs 18 10. The name of the Lord is a fortified tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. The name of the Lord. Now pay attention to this scripture. This scripture is not saying that the Lord is a fortified tower. No. The fortified tower is not Jehovah. No. It's not even saying God. No. But it is the name of the Lord. It's a strong tower. The righteous run into it. And they are saved. And the name that was given to the Lord when he dwelled among us, the name that the whole heavens have accepted to be the name of the Lord, Peter says that that name is the name that saves. That name is the name Jesus. So the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Not the Lord, but the name of the Lord. And the righteous run into that name and they are saved. Psalm 8 verse 1. Psalm 8 verse 1. Lord our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. O Lord our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth, not some parts of the earth. His name carries royal power. He rules in the whole world. Isaiah says that his government will be upon his shoulders. We all know that nations are demarcated. Now when you are president of a certain country, when you get to the borders of your jurisdiction, you don't carry that power that you have into another person's country and rule, no. No, not at all. Now, when you get to the border of your jurisdiction, where you are a president, a ruler, someone will have to escort you and give you all the courtesy saying that he is a president of this other nation. Otherwise, you are not the president in that country. But this one that we are talking about, his name is majestic in all the earth. 
So Isaiah says that his government is upon his shoulders. Wherever he gets to, he puts his throne down and rules. His government, he carries it. That is the man Jesus. His government is upon his shoulders. Now, what is a name? Dictionaries consulting all, a lot of them. This is how they want us to understand a name. A name is a word or a combination of same by which a person place or thing, a body or class or any object of thought is designated, called or known. Now, as many of you that can see the screens, I see that the big ones are facing outside this, this arena. But if you can maybe see what is behind me, he's saying that a name is a word or a combination of words by which a person, a place, thing, body, class, or any object of thought, that is anything that can be imagined, is designated, called, or known. Now, when we say that Jesus' name is above every name, it is above a thing, a place, a body, a person, or anything that can be imagined. That is a name. Now, hold on, that, hold on to that in your spirit. See, God named, now let me come to the importance of names. God named Adam. And afterwards, God did not name anything again. He decreed the naming of things, or people, or persons, or places, or classes, or bodies to human beings. He did that because God wanted everything. Tangible or intangible, anything that can be imagined, seen, and noted, can be handled or cannot be handled, to be named. God wanted us to name everything. Now, if he didn't do that, any time that we manufactured something like this, we needed to consult him for him to give us a name. So once he named Adam, he backed off, and then he gave the authority to name things and persons and places, and classes, and bodies, and anything that can be imagined, he bequeathed it in the hands of the human being. So we do the naming now. We name. Now. One major event in life is the naming ceremony. When one is born, it should be named. It should be given a name, and the name is formally adored. For people to know the name that this child is going to be identified with or this child is going to respond to. Now hold that one. If for any reason the name has to be changed, the law requires that it is published. You don't just change your name. When you are in school, you can be changing your nicknames, but they are not your real names. If you like, change your name and don't publish it. One day, your certificate will shock you. You hold it and it cannot be identified to the name that you are claiming is your name. Meanwhile, it is your certificate because you'll be bearing two names and it may not be accepted. So when a name has to be changed, the law requires that the name is published. It must go through the not real procedure for the name to be made public. We all should be identified with a name. And whatever name you respond to should be jealously guarded. Why am I saying that? Because we all like to respond to names. And our name, of course, our right name, that is what we identify with. But a name is not just for identification. 
All that a person is, is vested in his or her name. Your name is not just for identification. But all you are is vested in your name. Very, very important. How many of us here know Mr. Bean? Yeah. I see that all you are smiling. You are, some of you are even laughing. Mr. Bean is not here. But when you mention his name, who he is, zooms out of the name. So your name is not just for identification. Your name is greater than that. Your name is not just for identification. Second Samuel chapter 2, 20, verse 1. Second Samuel 20, verse 1. Now a troublemaker named Sheba, son of Bikri, a Benjamite, happened to be there. He sounded the trumpet and shouted, We have no share in David, no part in Jesse's son. Every man to his tent. Israel, they left. Now, let me just take the first line. Now, a troublemaker named Sheba, son of Bikri, a Benjamin, happened to be there. The name of this fellow is called Sheba. But who he is, is a troublemaker. So the Bible says that this troublemaker has a name. So all of us are like containers with labels. Your label is your name. But who you really are is what is contained in the bottle. Now hold it. So when your name is mentioned, or when you open the bottle, what comes out is the real you. But what is on the label is just your name. Now listen to that one very closely. Your name will always stand in for you. Your name will always stand in for you. That is why lawyers will tell you, you don't come to court. We will go and stand in for you. Because when they go to court, they will take the particulars plus your name. And then they defend your name whilst you are not there. They defend the name whilst you are not there. They defend the case and you are not there in person, but they are dealing with your name. And that one is allowed. Your name can always stand in for you. Your name stands in for you. Now, you destroy a person's name and you destroy the fellow. Because you and your name are one. So when somebody really wants to destroy you, he just destroys your name and then he destroys the container. Now listen. Proverbs Psalm 23 verse Three. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even God guards his name. He will walk on the right path so that the name of the Lord will not be blasphemed. So God is jealously guarding his name. He doesn't want his name to be destroyed. No. So guard your name. Now when your name is destroyed, while you are still alive, you could be useless. Now hold that into your spirit. Carry yourself well. When your name is destroyed, while you are still alive, you could be useless. Proverbs 21 verse 24. Proverbs 21, verse 24. The proud and arrogant person, Mocha is his name, behaves with insolent fury. The proud and arrogant person, Mocha is his name. Why is he called Mocha? Did the parents name him Mocha? 
but it is his behavior that is affecting his name. So instead of they calling him the, with the right name, because he's proud and arrogant, that one is affecting his name. Please pay attention to this. Your character will impact your name. Your character will impact your name. Carry yourself well. Please carry yourself well. Because of your name. Your name is all you have. It is your greatest treasure. I want you to bow down your head for a moment. Your name is your most important treasure. Not your titles. No. Not who you are. You may have all the qualifications. But your name is your most important treasure. Pay attention to it. Carry yourself well on campus. Don't spoil your name before you die. Shall we all pray and commit oh, our names before God? Let us pray that God, this is my name. Help me to preserve this name. Don't let my name be spoiled whilst I'm still alive. Father, make my name great. Shall we all pray this prayer? Yeah, I must say. Your name is all you have. Carry yourself well. Amen. Please lift up your head. There are certain things that are better than gold. Better than money. Second Samuel chapter 21 verse 4. We will take this one from the New Living Translation. 2 Samuel 21.4 Now, well, money can't settle this matter between us and the family of Saul. Well, money can't settle this matter. This is the Gibeonites and King David. David wanted to settle a dispute between these Gibeonites and the house of Saul with money. And then they lifted their hands and said, Nana, no, this matter is not money. So there are certain things that money cannot even settle. So money cannot settle this matter. Sometimes when you are growing up, you think that money is everything. No. One of my fathers said this, and... I held it. He, he, he was fond of saying that what is money to cockroach? He wasn't a rich man. But he also liked to drink. And any time that he's drunk, one of the things that you, you, you are sure he will say is what is money to cockroach? Money is nothing to cockroach. And money is not everything. In 1981, Bob Marley died. At the time he died, he was one of the richest in the world. And arguably, the one, the most famous around that time that he died. So many people wanted to help him and to keep him alive. But his money and his fame could not give him life. When he was operated upon, he was around 36 when he died. His face looked like 56-year-old person. 20 years more older than his age, he appeared. Eventually, he died. There are certain things that are better than gold. Better than money. Like good health. It's better than money. I was pastoring one of the richest suburbs in this country. Then one fellow came to call me to go and pray for this man who was sick. 
we had just bought a new district vehicle. And for me, it was a very nice, nice car. It was, it was flashy. But he led me to this man's house. When they opened the gate and we entered the compound, there were five cars sitting on the compound. And at once, my vehicle looked like a scrap. Looked like a scrap. Then I got down and I started looking around. I didn't see such beautiful cars before. I followed him. We went to the living room. I sat there for about 20 minutes and I was confused. The whole place was quiet. And this fellow who took me there was not returning to me. He just got me there and he said, I should wait. He's coming. 20 minutes and he's not coming. So I didn't know what was going on. I was turning my head round, round, round. I also didn't fetch anybody to go along with me. Then he came and said, What's up for five minutes? So, okay. I agreed to the five minutes. Then when it was five minutes, he was still not appearing. Then he came back again. What's up for five minutes? Then he came. So let's go. So you walk me to this rich man's room. Very big chamber. King size bed. But the man was lying on the bed and he couldn't move. Lean and gant. He's the owner of all these vehicles. The owner of this big mansion. There are certain things that are better than gold. Like good health. Like wisdom. Like favor. Like peace. When you are young and we are talking about peace, you may not appreciate it. But these things that I've mentioned, you can have all the money on earth, but you cannot find them in any shop to, to buy. You can't purchase them. You can't purchase them. Proverbs 22, verse 1. Proverbs 22, verse 1. A good name is more desirable than great riches. To be esteemed is better than silver and gold. So all that I've said, the greatest of them is a good name. Great name. Your name is your greatest asset that you have. Guard it jealously. What I don't like is for people to use my name to issue instructions when I'm not aware. I don't like that at all. Two times I've been affected in this manner. And in all instances, I was not happy at all. One, I just went out of my house to town, and I met this lady who is a member of our church. Then he said, oh, apostle, today too we waited, yesterday we waited for you, and you didn't pitch up. I said, you waited for me? He said, yes. Every day we have been waiting for you. Ah, waiting for me? For what? We had the presbytery meeting, and our pastor said, you, you were coming. We waited, and you didn't come. And this is not the first time, apostle, why? <laughs> me too I didn't know that I was going to be part of any presbytery meeting the man has used my name to organize people and I'm not aware and so <laughs> when I met him I said pastor did you have any presbytery meeting yesterday he said yes did you tell them I was going to be part of the meeting he said eh Samankasa <laughs> Omoma. Also, you are using my name to organize meetings and you are not telling me. Because what you are doing is effectively destroying my name. Just like the lady said, every day we wait for you and you don't come. So now they are going to take me for somebody. 
who is always saying that I will come and will never pitch up. Stop disturbing my name. And let my name rest. Don't disturb it and eventually destroy it. So I warn him. Because my name is my greatest treasure. Carry yourself well. There are some of us, you just go about, hey, and they'll be calling you by names, hey, 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 hey. It will affect you. Be careful. Even when you have become a minister of state, that thing that you did will affect you. It will be part of your name. Carry yourself well. How many of you are getting something this evening? Please, carry yourself well. Fine. A good name or a great name does not only bring security to the bearer, but it, it is also a purchasing power. When your name is great, it does many good things for you. Genesis 12, verse 2. Genesis 12, verse 2. I will make you into a great nation. And I will bless you. I will make your name great. And you will be a blessing. When your name is great, you will be what? A blessing. When your name is great, you'll be a blessing. Now, fancy that you enter into, uh, you are looking for job. And then, the panel that is supposed to interview you, you enter the, the hall, they were seated. The one who is actually chairing, once you got in there, said, what? You look like this man. And he actually mentioned your daddy's name. And he said, ah, that was a good man. I, I heard he, he's passed on. Then you look at him. That man was a blessing to me. So, is he your father? Say so, yes, my dad. If you don't pass the interview, and then now also, you do a chinesu. Now, you see, your old man might be dead. But his name will still linger on. And that good and great name will still open doors for descendants. Your name is the greatest asset that you have. Keep it and hold it. He told Abraham, I'll make your name great. And Abraham, you, you will be a blessing. You see, people with great names, when you go to the banking halls, you don't find them. Not that they don't take, they don't redraw money. They transact. They deposit, they redraw. But you see, their names fetch the money for them. People with great names. I'm not talking about people who want to lord their authority over people. Sometimes, they will just wait. Around 4.30 when they know that the banks are closing. Then they will pick the phone. Then they will call. Then the one at the other end take the receiver. Hello? Such people, the first thing they do is to mention their name. I am so, so, and so. Now when you hear the name, you, you realize that you begin to shake. Say, hello, uh, can, I, can, I fake, can I ask the manager to, to, to speak to you? Say, yes, I'm waiting. Then the manager comes, say, sir, please can I help you? And then this man will say that, uh, I hope you have not closed. He himself, he knows you have closed. Then the manager will say, oh, yes, sir, no, sir. Uh, please, I want to ask my driver to come and uh, fetch some money. Uh, would that be okay? Say, oh, yes. Um, can he come in an hour's time? Then the manager said, oh, even if it's two hours, okay, then he'll be there in three hours. Yeah. Now, listen, I don't want you to behave like that. But you see, what is causing this manager to do over time is because of a name. The man gets to the hall, uh, even the driver, he gets to the hall and he says that so-so and so sent me. And because he's, he's carrying a name, they open doors for him as if the man himself were there. 
Now listen. If for any reason you are looking for a pen to write, and then you saw this pen on the table, and then you wanted to pick this pen, and then somebody said, hey, that pen belongs to so-so-and-so. Sometimes you just drop the pen, and then you salute the pen, and you go back like that. Now, things that are associated to great names even has, have value. Those things, just common things. The chairs they sit on, the pens they write with. That is why sometimes some footballers want to sell their booze for, for, for huge sums of money because of the name that is associated to the booze. Am I communicating now? Hold on to your name. The reason why God decided to cause Israel to be blessed was all because of his name that is upon them. He says, I will make your name a great name. Now, a name outlives the bearer. Your name will bow me outlive you. That is why people say Nkrumah never dies. Not that he's not dead. No. Nkrumah is dead. Nkrumah is dead. But Nkrumah never dies because the name always lives on. Because of who he was. Nkrumah never dies. How much powerful and honored is the name of Jesus who, who rose from the grave. And he's seated at the right hand of the Father. How much powerful is this name? Now, brothers, Dr. Charles Blair has said this. Charles Blair was the founder of Calvary Temple in Denver, in Colorado. He said this, and I want to quote. The bigness of a man is determined by the cause he lives for. And the price is willing to pay to achieve it. How big a man is or a person is, is the cause that person lives for and the price is willing to pay to achieve it. So great names do not just come to us. You need to work at them. If you want your name to be great, please work at it. Now, I want us to talk about the man Jesus briefly. Psalm 2 from verse 5. Philippians 2, I should say, verse 5. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Who being the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to use for his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing and taking up the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and becoming, by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Now my interest is in verse 9 and 10. So let's go to verse 9. Shall we read together? Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. Therefore, God also, like I said the other time, exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name. He didn't give, didn't give him half of the universe. Now he gave him what? The name. Because I've tried to establish the importance of name. God gave him a name and the name that is above every name. He exalted him. The name that Jesus has inherited, according to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, is superior to that of angels, superior to that of Moses, superior to that of Abraham, is superior to any name that is named. The name that he has inherited. But let's read Verse 10 of Philippians 2. Verse 10 of Philippians 2. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. Now, verse 11. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is what? 
is Lord. The name that is inherited is the same name that was given to him at birth. When I was reading the Bible, the first time I came across God as giving him a name, I thought that God was going to give him a name like Yakubu, so that we know that he has given him a name. But it's the same name. Why, why is this name greater than the name that it was named? What is the difference? I would like to explain. See, the name Jesus is like Joshua. It was a common name. Galatians 1 verse 11. Galatians 1 verse 11. Jesus, who is called Yastus, also sends greetings. Sorry, Colossians 4 11. Jesus, who is called Yastus, also sends greetings. So there was this Jesus, who was also called Justice, also sends his greetings. As chapter 13 verses. As 13 verses. They traveled throughout the whole island until they came to Paphos. There they met the Jewish sorcerer and false prophet named Bar Jesus, the son of a certain man called Jesus. Matthew 27 verse 16 and 17. Matthew 27, 16 and 17. Now, at that time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Jesus Barabbas. I mean, this was the Barabbas who was exchanged with Jesus of Nazareth. So they exchanged Jesus Barabbas with Jesus of Nazareth. So even this man who was a traitor was called Jesus. So Jesus was a common name. Now, what is, what is wonderful about the name Jesus now? The president of the Republic of Ghana is called Nana Adedanko Akufuade, right? I'm sure that when he went to class one, that was the name the father gave him. He has lived with this name. When he was campaigning, he was still using this name. or any, Was he using a different name? The same name, fine. Then when he won the election, and then he swore an oath, and he became the president of the republic, did he change the name? No, the same name. Guess after about a week or two into he becoming the president, I heard somebody advise someone over the radio that, my friend, the man is the president of Ghana. You can't be spiting the name the way you used to do it. What makes his name different? Now, all Ghana, the authority backs that name. So, the name is the same, but there is an authority backing the name now. The president of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Adedankwa Akufad, that authority makes this name different. Now, listen. The authority now makes their name different. What about Jesus? Ah, are you together? Hmm. I'm sure some of you are desiring to be the president now. Let's go to Philippians 2. Verse 9 again. Philippians 2, 9. And this time I want all of us to read. Ready, go. Therefore... Yes, it's okay. Therefore, who? God. Now, listen. When you say you have a PhD and you are called a doctor, nobody will argue with you. But they will ask you, from which university? It's a university of Nkoko. Now, which university conferred the name on you? It's a university of Nkoko. What is the university of Nkoko? Where is this situated? The authority of what you have depends on who conferred it on you. But in this instance, the Bible says, therefore, God, the supreme being, the king of kings, the king of all the gods, the creator and owner of all things, 
conferred this authority on the man Jesus. And it is settled. So when you mention the name Jesus, because of the one who gave that name, things in heaven, on the earth and under the earth, stand in awe of the name. The whole heaven backs that name. The Bible says that it pleased the Lord that the fullness of the Godhead bodily would dwell in our Lord. Hallelujah. Now, we have said that a man and his name are one. Today, we don't need Jesus to be here in person. No. His name is enough. Because what he would have done in the flesh, his name would do the same. His name would do the same. There is no difference between Jesus in the flesh and the name Jesus. Whatever he would have done in the flesh, his name would do the same. Peter and John were going to church. And at the beautiful gate, this man who was lame from birth and has been, he's grown 40 years plus. He, Ask them for money. And then Peter and John said, Look at us. Silver and gold we don't have. But what we have, we want to give that to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise. Now listen. I have said that when you mention a person's name, all that the person is, is vested in his name. So when they said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise. All the power, all the glory, all the authority that is vested in that name, zoomed out of the name. And the man stood up. His ankles were strong. And the Bible says that he was walking and jumping and leaping and praising God. Then the Sahindri decided to disturb Peter and the rest. They organized them and they asked them this question. As chapter 4 verse 7. As chapter 4 verse 7. As chapter 4 verse 7. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? By what power or what name? Now they are acknowledging that a certain power or a certain name has caused this man who is lame for 40 years to rise. And then Peter will want to explain. Verse 8. Then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if, you are, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. If you want to know, then know this. It is by the name, brothers and sisters. Listen. Paul says that the Son, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones, powers, rulers, authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead. So that in everything, he might have the supremacy. In everything, he might have the supremacy. When there is no way and the name of Jesus is mentioned, he must have the supremacy. When the doctor says that you are going to die, 
and that he has given you 21 days to live. And the name of Jesus is mentioned in faith. He must have the supremacy. In everything, he must have the supremacy. Today in the name of Jesus. Today in the name of Jesus. Today in the name of the matchless one. Rise. Walk. Yes. Today in the name of the righteous one. Amen. Sickness be gone. Amen. Today in the name of the yeah, righteous master. one. I reverse mm. whatever the devil has programmed into your life. I deprogram that in Jesus name. Now in everything he must have the supremacy. Now listen brothers. I spent a lot of time trying to talk about the importance of names. And then we have gotten to a point where I'm saying that the name that of Jesus is the same name that he was named when at birth. But now the whole heaven backs that name. It makes that name different. When that name knocks at your door and he enters your home, you are blessed. <laughs> you are blessed. You are blessed. Many years ago, whilst I was still uh, a bachelor, I had not married yet, I had uh, some bad experience for three consecutive days. Any time that I slept, around 11 p.m. thereabout, something will pull my hair and I will not sleep again. So for three days, I've not slept. The once my hair is pulled like that, I won't sleep again. I'll just sit on my bed, become very restless. To daybreak, then I'll just bath and go to work. Then I told myself, in everything, he must have the supremacy. Because the name of Jesus is much more powerful than the rod of Moses that parted the rest into two. The name of Jesus is much more powerful than that of Elisha that raised the boy from the dead. Why should I sit down for people to be pulling my hair like that? So I made the decision to wait for them. So on the fourth day, Right after coming from work, I decided to rest a while. Seven o'clock, I was asleep. By nine, I woke up. And then I started in the name of Jesus. You forces of darkness. You, you forces of darkness. Whether you are from my hometown or my home city or from church or from campus, wherever you are coming from, in the name of Jesus, I I I joy you. I command you never to operate in this hall again. <laughs> Jesus, arise. That night they didn't come, but up to today they've not returned. <laughs> they've not returned. Growing up as a young man, I liked to fast, and people actually I didn't know how to manage it. And I fasted and fasted and fasted. I really fasted and empty stomach for days. Then I realized that I was contracting some ulcers. Any time, any day, my stomach was a challenge. Then one day I decided to go to Jesus. I went to this place of meeting. It was just a classroom. That was where our assembly was. At Ahinsa in Kumasi. I went there in the middle of the night myself. When I got to the classroom, nobody was there. I just said, Jesus, I have come. Today you have to heal me. I've heard that you are the healer. I will need this stomach for the future. Because I have to continue to fast. Because of some demons that I have to deal with. I need this tummy. Then I lay down flat on my back like that. And I said, Father, heal me. And I decided to sleep. Because I called him to come and operate on my life. 
and on my tummy. Yeah. After some hours, when I woke from bed, I said, Jesus, have you done it? I hope you have done that. So that I can tell people that you are all powerful. Up until today, I've not had that experience ever. The last time that I went to check on my tummy, the doctor said, uh, do you have ulcers? And I couldn't answer. Because the kind of work we do, when he said, do you have ulcers? I looked at the man's face and I, I couldn't answer. So when was the last time you charged? Oh, about some couple of, some six months ago. So, okay, then let me subject you to uh, some examination. He came back and said, ah, Osofu, you don't have anything like Osa. Because I was healed when I was still a teenager. Here in Kumasi, see the name of Jesus, when it is mentioned in faith, does many things. There is no ballistic misa that can be compared to that name Jesus. Oh. No, not at all. And tonight, he is go you are going to experience the power that is in the name Jesus. Amen. You are going to experience it. It is going to be like cocoa. Everybody is going to have it. Because one day whilst he was walking, the Bible says that anyone that touched him was healed. Now, it is better today. Because those days, everyone wanted to touch him. One single man. But today, you don't need to touch him. The name is close to you. When you just wake up, plug in into the name. Plug in into the name. And your life will never be the same again. This is the name Jesus. The greatest in all the world. In all the earth. The most famous name. It has authority. And it also has power. To heal. To deliver. To cast out demons. To fix broken vessels. To create organs. Ah, this lady said, I have HIV. Oh, HIV. So we went for prayer. And we just mentioned the name Jesus. Then she fell down. She was screaming on the floor. And then she just sat on the floor. But she was wearing this bare back. It was hot afternoon. I was also sweating. So I just did this. And some of the sweat fell at the back. And then she started screaming. Ah, they are burning my back. They are burning my back. Now, in the midst of the burning the back, and in the midst of the name Jesus, she decided to go and check whether the HIV is still present. She went the third day of the meeting. She picked the mic. Ladies and gentlemen, by the grace of God, hmm. when I went to check, the HIV is gone. Today you will be healed. Jesus. I challenge you, you will be healed. I challenge you, you will be healed. Jesus. Now, you might have wasted money on doctors, but you are still not getting better. But I want you to rise to your feet today. Jesus. Just rise in faith. Jesus. And wherever the sickness is, lay hands at the Jesus. His name is Jesus. Now listen, you may be in a, a challenge. Jesus. Just trust this name. Jesus. You are going to be free indeed. Jesus.